What's up, DIY Nation? It's your boy Darren here with another improvisational video. And what I mean by that is this is something I wasn't actually planning to film, but since I'm out here and uh, messing around with something, which tends to be the case all the time, I figured I'd go ahead and, and uh, give this a shot and see if it works. You know, this is something uh, I've never troubleshot before, but um, this will be a short video. Uh, hopefully, we can fix this problem and... Um, It'll help y'all out there in the uh, DIY world also. So what are we working on today? I'm sitting inside on the passenger side of my buddy's uh, 2008 Ford Mustang GT uh, convertible. Now, uh, full transparency, Mustangs are my thing. I love it. Uh, I'm a Mustang guy. I've always been a Mustang guy. I got a Mustang tattoo on my, on my arm. It's the first one I ever got. But uh, I haven't had a Mustang, believe it or not. I haven't owned one since uh, 2012. Um, unfortunately, eventually I'll get another one started with Fox bodies and I've had probably about five or six of them over the years. But anyway, I digress. The issue with this car, it is apparently a semi-frequent issue, I guess, is, um, with this particular car, you'll be driving around and the, uh, right hand turn signal will just turn on, on its own and won't shut off. Does not matter where the stalk position is if you put the left blinker on it'll turn the left blinker on the minute you flip it back to center the right blinker turns on again problem is is that it doesn't do it consistently it just does it whenever the hell it feels like doing it so um i guess maybe this was the first generation of this uh self-driving mode where the car just decides when it wants to change lanes and by doing so it puts the blinker on letting you know it's ready perhaps i don't know but anybody that's had a uh, 2005 to 2009 Mustang has probably had some similar issues if you've kept them long enough. Apparently, this issue tends to crop up more in the convertibles just because uh, the induction of moisture and everything like that. So what probably is the issue? There is a module in here called the GEM slash SJB. It's uh, the uh, generic electronic module i think it stands for and then sjb is smart junction box so i'll show you where it is here in a second it's down here in the kick panel i've already got the kick panel taken apart but um generally what happens is you get some moisture down inside the uh the dash here down on the kick panel and it starts corroding things or causing things to have issues uh, now as the car has been at my house i think i've only had it crop up one time that symptom uh, every other time where either I've just turned the key on or I've moved the car around, it didn't do it. So I went ahead and plugged Forescan into it to see if there was a way that I could program it out. But unfortunately, um, the Forescan uh, interface for this car doesn't have that option. So what are we looking at here? Let me take you in there and I'll show you what I found. Stand by. All right. So down here, <coughs> we have the uh, the kick panel taken apart underneath the uh, car or underneath the dash here so the way you do this is it's pretty simple you uh you lift up this trim piece and then the actual kick panel trim piece there's a snap-in piece right there there's a snap-in piece right here and i think there's one more uh nope there's not one up there so it's just the two of them and then it uh it just comes right out and you can lay it off to the side so the uh the actual gem module is this box right here and I verified that with the part number and everything that's on. And there's two big connectors that go, or two connectors that go in. You got this big interface connector right here, which obviously plugs into this slot. And then you have a little blue connector that plugs into this slot. Now, when I pulled this guy out, um, looking at the pins, you know, they said basically if you see any corrosion on the pins, it's generally a dead giveaway that something's going on. Now, there's a little bit of just surface corrosion on here but nothing that seems to be that it would impact any connectivity between that and the same goes with the pins inside the box they all look relatively clean if you look closely there's a few that maybe have a little bit of corrosion on them but not much now when i pulled the blue one though look at that that sucker is dirty there is all kinds of corrosion on that there's all kinds of corrosion up inside those pins and everything like that and then of course if I can get the light in the right place inside there, you can also see a bunch of corrosion. This is more than likely um, the culprit right here. So basically what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get a soft bristle brush and some electronics cleaner 
inside there and try to clean that out and see if that actually fixes the problem. Again, I've never worked on this problem before. Let's see if my light wants to stay. I've never worked on this problem before, but then again, that's what DIY is. It's all about learning new things and diving into things you've never done before. But I'm also going to get that electronics cleaner on here as well and uh, see if I can't clean that up. So give me a couple of minutes. I'm going to uh, get some stuff, some supplies together, and we'll get after this and see if we can't figure this out. So hang tight. All right, all right. I'm gonna do my best under here. I don't really have a place to uh, mount my phone that's real good, but I'll do my best to try to show you what I'm doing here. So I've got some of this uh, contact cleaner. It's a quick drying, plastic safe uh, contact cleaner for uh, cleaning contacts and stuff. And I'm just gonna basically lightly spray this on here and get after it with the brush, right? I'm just gonna sit here and clean this off, let that brush work down into those areas and it's already dry try to help get some of this residue out of these plugs here so and of course anybody has watched my other carb cleaning videos uh, it's hard for you to see but i've got my uh my trusty jet cleaner which can also go down in these holes and clean some of that garbage out of these contacts in here now it's a good idea obviously to disconnect the battery on the car make sure you've gotten all the power out of the system before you do this because you don't want you know you don't want to accidentally short something out either with the you know the cleaning con the little pin for the contact cleaning or even the fluid that you're pumping down into these things so why does my light seem like it's not so bright all right i don't know why my light doesn't seem that bright but anyway as you can see, already a drastic improvement right there. Um, so basically just going to run this thing up and down inside these holes. And all this is is just, a, like I said, it's just a fine piece of wire that I use for uh, cleaning jets and carburetors and things like that. Um, not every one of these pins has a terminal inside of it so some of them will be super loose others you'll feel some resistance in there but i'm just running this up inside each one of these holes real quick and once i'm done right with one row i'll go through and spray it down a little bit give it a little brush and then of course to spray the residue out all right so that's that side so let me uh let me go ahead and clean off the other side of this like i said let me clean the top row of this and then i'll come back and then uh, we'll get after this plug socket up here so stand by all right so we got the uh top row cleaned out as well every single one of those um these pinholes has been um uh, I guess clean <laughs> with the wire. I was going to try to use something funny, but it didn't didn't hit me that time. But anyway, uh, every one of these has been cleaned out. It's been blowed out, and so now we're also going to get after this uh, this plug at the top. I did spray a little bit in there. Uh, I don't know where the heck my little straw went for my cleaner. That has now disappeared. But anyway, hell with it. We don't need it. So let me get up inside here again. This is some fast drying stuff. So you can, even if you don't blow it out, it'll help to, it'll evaporate pretty quickly, I should say. It'll it'll come out pretty quick. But basically, I'm just using a soft bristle brush, just getting up in there good and light. You don't want to bend any of the terminals, obviously, because that would be kind of uh, uh, not supporting our mission here. But we're just going to run this brush up inside here. And... Uh, my air hose came undone. Put that back on, and we're gonna blow blow that stuff out. It says it doesn't leave residue. I don't particularly believe that, but it, you know, it's still cleaner than it was. Let's put it that way. Get it on there. You can see how quickly this stuff actually does start to evaporate. I mean, it's trying to drip, and it's evaporating as it's dripping so even if you don't get it completely blown out it will evaporate out of there on its own so 
Again, just be very careful as you're pushing the bristles up in here. This is uh, one way to do it. Obviously, you could pull the module out and run some sandpaper, some like, you know, thousand grit sandpaper up in those terminals and get after it a little bit better. But because this one wasn't that bad, I don't believe we're going to need to go that route. I think this is probably going to be sufficient. So, and there goes the compressor. So, let me bring you up in here and you can see what that socket looks like, hopefully. And uh, now it's been cleaned out. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, plug these things back in. Un momento. I'm gonna turn off my compressor. That thing takes forever. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this thing back in. Um, these little plugs, uh, they're actually pretty neat. They have this, uh, this little anchor on there, this little locking tab. So when you push it in, it'll actually lock it in place. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. That one goes that way for some reason. And we'll just snap that in place. There's a little locking tab that holds it in place. And then same, we're not gonna clean this guy because it actually, let me knock that off. We're actually, uh, this one wasn't bad enough as I stated earlier, so we're not gonna have to worry about cleaning that one, but it, it locks in the same exact way. You push it down in, and then you'll see the tab come up. You just fold it over, lock it in place. And that's all there is to it. Um, so, like I said, this may this may fix the problem. Uh, it may not, but um, there very well could be some corrosion inside the box as well uh, that's gotten in there. Who knows, but this is the first attempt and stage that you would do uh, to try to straighten out these uh, little uh, intermittent issues that are caused by this module. And this module actually controls a lot of different things, controls interior lighting, exterior lighting, door chimes, all of that stuff is all controlled by this. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, get myself out from under this dash and I got to hook the battery back up and uh, we will try it again. Stand by. Ow, just hit my head. All right, now stand by. Okay, so we're back in the car here. Now, um, I didn't mention that uh, my friend was Shaquille O'Neal, so we actually had to take the, uh, you know, the front seat out so that, uh, you know, he would fit in here. Actually, that's, just, <laughs> that's not true. Uh, front seat's being fixed right now. But uh, anyway, so we're gonna get turn this on, hopefully, um we see no blinker on the dash and like i said it is intermittent so it may not do it now one thing you will probably hear um it'll sound like we're under attack by a woodpecker because when this radio lights up it's got this cd changer issue in there and it literally sounds like a woodpecker is is, is getting after it in the dash but anyway we'll try to ignore that and we'll see what happens so keys in ah see there it goes Anybody who has ever grown up in the 80s, when computers first came out, they had those big printers. Uh, they were called dot matrix printers. That's exactly what those dang things sounded like when they would print. It was, my mom had one, and it used to keep us up all night. All right, let's see if that thing wants to... Oh, here we go. All right, anyway. Let me turn that off. Let's see what we got on the dash here. We got... Driver's door is a jar. No, it's a door. Uh, fuel level's low. Um, nope, that's not true because it's got more fuel in it. Uh, driver's door is a jar. No, it is also a door. We have a couple of flashing lights in here. Check engine lights flashing. Well, not anymore. Tire pressure we already knew about. So it's reinitializing all of these. Uh, the airbag light has been flashing too, so... Um, let's see if we can, where the heck's the thing to go through the menus on here? Uh, I don't remember where it is on this car. Oh, here we go. Press reset to clear. I don't want to clear it. Nope. All right. Tire pressure monitor fault. Oops, sorry. You guys can't see that. Uh, we've already had that. Please close door. I don't want to close a door. How about you just go through the menu? Oh, for Pete's sakes. Anyway, 
All right, well, let's see. We're in park, everything. Let's start it up. And my light fell down. Yeah, we know about that. No, it's not a jar, it's a door. All right, let's check the blinker. We got a blinker. We got a left blinker. We got a right blinker, and they are blinking. I do see them out there. And we got that. All right, like I said, those two lights have been on, so that's I'm not worried about those. Exhaust sounds pretty good on this thing. All right, passenger door is ajar. Please close door. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Anyway, I don't have a flashing blinker, so that's good. So hopefully, hopefully it stays like that. Now, in the event that uh, it doesn't work that way, it doesn't stay working that way, uh, maybe we'll do a subsequent video of uh, replacing the module or going into it or something like that. Depends on what my friend wants to do with it. But anyway, currently, the only reason why I'm diving into this is because the, uh, when I first got in the car earlier, it did do it for a very short moment. So it was still happening. Once I get the seat back in this thing, we'll drive it around and see what happens. But uh, anyway, just want to do this short video, show you just one way that you can help to try to solve that problem if you start having these intermittent ridiculous issues and it's due to that junction box over there. Pull those plugs, check them, clean them out, reseal them, sit them back in there properly. Who knows? It may fix your problem. So this is another video. I appreciate all the support. Channel's growing. We're still growing slowly but surely. And it is because of all of y'all. And I thank you very much. This is uh, at DIY1978 Guy telling you, peace out.